Good afternoon. I'm Reagan Zimmerman. And I'm Lily Zoller. Today on The Badger Report, we will bring you updates on this week's events, election, and COVID-19. Wisconsin's recount election resulted in an increased number of votes for President-elect Joe Biden. Analyzing the aftermath of the election, UW experts look into the reasons why Wisconsin went blue this year and what's to come in January. With the holidays coming up, we'll show you how a local Madison charity is working to deliver gifts to children in need, despite the COVID-19 pandemic. Although many businesses are suffering due to the COVID-19 pandemic, we'll show you one business that's doing just fine this year. Coming up next on The Badger Report. From Vilas Hall on the campus of the University of Wisconsin-Madison, this is the Badger Report. Coronavirus infection rates continue to rise in Wisconsin. Wisconsin's number of cases sits at 4,171 with 81 deaths. Public health officials are recommending that people refrain from social gatherings and follow COVID-19 health guidelines. As we approach the holidays, Governor Tony Evers emphasizes the importance for Wisconsinites to practice increased precautions when it comes to visiting family members. As many individuals and families ramp up their holiday traditions, some may be virtually for the first time, it's important to remember the pandemic has not gone away. Since the beginning of the pandemic, Wisconsin has been a hub for COVID treatment efforts. Working with pharmaceutical company AstraZeneca, UW Health initiated vaccine trials in August. Currently, UW Health is preparing to serve as a central storage facility for the Midwest regional supply of the Pfizer vaccine. The Wisconsin Department of Health Services and UW Health will distribute the vaccine to healthcare systems and long-term care facilities in the region at the end of the month. The Food and Drug Administration has confirmed the safety and efficacy of Pfizer's COVID-19 vaccine. In an analysis, the FDA reports that the vaccine provides almost full protection against the COVID-19 virus. The vaccine is administered in two doses, three weeks apart. The FDA reports that the vaccine will begin to take effect after the first dose. According to the report, serious side effects are rare and the vaccine works very well despite a person's age, sex, race, ethnicity, or previous COVID-19 infection. Wisconsin has received a shipment of the vaccines and will begin administering tests to the public following authorization from the FDA. This decision was made yesterday. Rapid COVID-19 antibody testing is now available at Pick and Save and Metro Market Pharmacy locations. Anybody interested in taking the test can sign up online. The total cost is $25 and you can get your results back within 15 minutes. I'm so glad to hear that antibody testing is more accessible now and it seems like the vaccine will probably be widely available soon too. Yeah, I'm definitely looking forward to it, Lily. As for now, COVID-19 continues to impact everybody's daily routines, particularly essential workers. The Badger Report's Stephen Potter checks in with the Madison Fire Department to see how the pandemic is affecting their work. Most of us can decide to stay away from people who might be infected with COVID-19. Firefighters, paramedics, and emergency medical technicians don't have that luxury. Instead, they rush headfirst into emergencies and accidents where people need help. And that includes unknown situations where someone they're helping just might have the coronavirus. Uh, every call that we do have is not a COVID positive person, we all have to treat it like that way. The added stress of a virus that can affect you and your family members, um, taking that home from work with you, you know, isn't fun to think about. One of the changes that the Madison Fire Department has made because of the pandemic is to try and limit the number of personnel interacting with patients on the scene of an emergency or accident. But that's not always possible. If it's a cardiac arrest or something like that where you need all six people for um, what's going on. For a number of reasons, it's hard for firefighters, paramedics, and EMTs to know how many of their patients have had the coronavirus. It's pushing probably about 10 or 12 for sure with, that I've been in contact with that I know of. Um, 
because there's a lot of a lot of the calls that don't, we don't hear back from that the patients could be positive. Um, it, it seems like the numbers are increasing every day. So far, 50 members of the Madison Fire Department have contracted COVID-19. That's led to some staffing challenges as well as an increase in overtime. The overtime budget's definitely been um, drained quite a bit uh, because when you are sick, you have to stay away um, from the station. Regardless of the numerous new challenges firefighters, paramedics, and EMTs face because of the coronavirus pandemic, they say nothing will stop them from helping those who need it. You just uh, wear your, your PPE and you, you go to work and you get, get the job done. For the Badger Report, I'm Stephen Potter. Christmas is just around the corner, and due to COVID-19, some families' budgets are a bit more pinched than usual. While the holiday season will look a little different this year, one local children's charity is finding a way to help the community and spread some holiday cheer. R.I. Shirali with the Badger Report has the story. Over the centuries, the Empty Stocking Club has been serving communities in need with brand new gifts on Christmas. COVID-19 doesn't slow the charity down as it works to meet every child's basic needs. We have 10,300 kids or so and about 3,500 families. So we're up not as significantly um, as we imagined, but I, I think that we have kind of hit the, I, mean, I feel like we have kind of you know reached the, the peak of the families in need. We've These things are selected based on the age and interest of each child and it will be delivered to struggling families to rejoice of Christmas gifts. This wouldn't have been possible without volunteers help. And this whole year has been strange and there's so many people who need help and just need to feel a little extra special. This year the Medicine Reading Project is partnering with the club and donating thousands of books to families so that each child will receive a book and a toy. We've moved in over 12,000 books into the Alliant Energy Center yesterday. Uh, their volunteers are going through and picking all the toys and books for kids, and those will be distributed in the community uh, this week. Let's hope that new gifts and books will warm family houses and spread holiday cheer. Merry Christmas. For the Badger Report, I'm Arai Shirao. Thanks, Arai. It's so great to see how charities are helping families, especially during this really, these really hard times. The Trump administration's recount lawsuit continues to be debated in Wisconsin. When we come back, we'll break down the latest updates on, on the election lawsuit and its potential impact. You can try, but you'll never stop a badger. Because we badgers are born with curious minds and endless heart. When we see a curve in the road, we speed up. When there are mask shortages for first responders, we make our own supply chain. When there's a world on pause, we sharpen our claws. Through thunder, fire, and pandemics, we'll keep going. Because after all, you can't stop a badger. Lawsuits challenging the result of the 2020 presidential election are continuing to pour in from President Trump's legal team. However, none have shown proof of widespread voter fraud or illegality so far. Here's what we know about the lawsuit so far. A federal judge did not rule from the bench by the time this was recorded Thursday afternoon, but indicated he was unlikely to overturn Wisconsin's election results. When Wisconsin did vote back in November, it seems like the coronavirus was high on the list of issues for voters, but it wasn't as bad of an issue for President Trump as some thought it would be. There was a frame that he put out and was somewhat successful at putting forth that he handled it, um, it's not a big deal, you know, uh, etc., cetera, et cetera. UW professor Mike Wagner found that many Trump supporters don't consume any news at all, which may be a reason the president's arguments against COVID-19 and voter fraud are still circulating. Um, the largest category uh, were media avoiders, people who weren't using uh, or consuming news at all um, in terms of a support for President Trump. While Trump supporters may believe what the president is saying, the judges involved in his legal case don't seem to. Wisconsin electors are currently scheduled to give their 10 votes to Joe Biden on December 14th.
The University of Wisconsin-Madison's Elections Research Center has been hard at work analyzing the outcomes of the 2020 presidential election and the influence of Wisconsin voters. Today, the Election Research Center's Professor Mike Wagner joins us to discuss election outcome, the election outcomes in 20, 2020. Professor Wagner, thanks for joining us. It's my pleasure. All right, so we're just kind of curious, what data has been most striking to you and your colleagues in post-election analysis? Well, I would say one thing that jumps out the most is that supporters of President Trump uh, are, are more likely than not to say that they believe that things are going in such a way in the United States that they may have to take up weapons to stop it. And that's a, a very distressing uh, finding that people are, are openly endorsing the idea that they may need to take to the streets with weapons to uh, alter the course of a free and fair election where the election by all accounts that are legitimate and fact-based was one that was um, freely conducted, fairly conducted, accurately counted, and did not contain any widespread voter fraud. Interesting. So was there a strong contributing factor in the outcome of this year's election in Wisconsin, do you think? I think there were many factors. I think the coronavirus was one, the state of the economy was another, uh, the overall uh, satisfaction or, or general dissatisfaction that Wisconsinites tended to have toward uh, the job approval uh, of President Trump was one. Uh, I think people also have known and trusted Joe Biden for, for a long time. And so some folks who, who might not have been willing to vote for Hillary Clinton, either because of uh, sexist reasons or reasons of a lack of trust that came from policy or past performance uh, kind of melted away when it came to uh, support for Biden. His support for uh, Kamala Harris, I think, also uh, did more to energize uh, some communities in Wisconsin that, that didn't turn out to vote as much uh, in 2016 as they did in 2020. But this was a razor thin election. Um, they, 15 things mattered and they all mattered by a few thousand votes. And uh, that, that's probably why uh, Joe Biden won by around 20,000 here in our state. Absolutely. And considering the Trump administration's multiple attempts to overturn the election in states across the country, how do you think the public should be feeling about the strength of our democracy at the moment? I think the public should be worried about the strength of our democracy. It's unfathomable to most people that uh, a sitting president would decide that a freely and fairly conducted election um, that didn't go uh, his way was one that he should try to contest and, and contest without evidence uh, and yet contest it in a way that uh, pretends that he's certain about the result when the result is that Joe Biden plainly and obviously won the election. Of course, President Trump told us he would do this, and so it's not very surprising that he's doing it. What's more surprising is, is the hundreds of Republican lawmakers around the country who are not willing to say that uh, Joe Biden won the election. And if they aren't willing to say that, I suppose we should ask if we don't think that they won their re-elections. If the election was fraudulent for one, why not for them? So going off of this, do you think there's anything that people should be paying attention to in the coming weeks leading up to the inauguration? Is there anything that you would say you would advise people to help navigate this tough time? Look for clear demonstrations of evidence, not just wild claims or promises that someday the evidence will come. Evidence that actually shows who voted for who is, is what matters in our system. And so uh, we need to look for that. I would say the other thing to look for is which lawmakers are endorsing democratic principles of a peaceful transfer of power, of accepting the results of elections, of contesting their ideas in the marketplace of ideas rather than trying to um, find a sympathetic court to overturn uh, the will of the people in an election. All right. Well, that's all we have time for. Thank you so much, Professor Wagner. We appreciate your insight. New information from the UW-Madison Police Department shows that criminal offenses are on the rise on campus. I took a look at the 2020 Annual Security and Fire Safety Report to explain what the numbers mean about crime trends on and around campus. Crime trends are consistent, as theft remains the number one criminal issue on the university campus. The report revealed that burglary on campus property was higher in 2019 than it has been in the past two years. There was more than a 20 case increase in 2019, but this indicates more than just a surge in burglaries. Anytime we see increased numbers in any categories, to us, to a certain extent, it indicates some sort of trust and comfort in people 
uh, reporting those matters to us. Downward trends in crime were also evident in the report. Liquor referrals were down more than 25 percent since 2018. This follows efforts from the police department and university health services to deal with alcohol consumption. Action like this is how the police use the results of the report to promote safety. The Department of Education um, through the Cleary Act requires uh, universities who receive federal funding to do this report every single year. This is just one tool for us to um, ensure that we're doing uh, adequate things on campus to keep our community safe. The report includes information about safety resources on campus for the community to reference. The department urges people to use this as a resource to guide their safety throughout the year. A list of contact information for university students and employees in crisis is available in the report. Lily, I'm curious, did Lovacott have any insight into what current crime trends for 2020 are looking like right now? Yeah, absolutely. The unprecedented nature of this year will definitely skew crime data. He actually said that the UW campus has been very responsible in abiding by social distancing guidelines. So he expects that to be reflected in the crime trends of this year. COVID-19 has forced students and teachers into online learning. This format can be especially difficult for students with special needs. After the break, we'll see how one Madison High School program is helping recent graduates build lifelong skills virtually. Is winter weather on its way to Madison? Stay tuned for this weekend's weather report on the Badger Report. You can try, but you'll never stop a Badger. Because we Badgers are born with curious minds and endless heart. When we see a curve in the road, we speed up. When there are mask shortages for first responders, we make our own supply chain. When there's a world on pause, we sharpen our claws. Through thunder, fire, and pandemics, we'll keep going. Because after all, you can't stop a Badger. Schooling during the pandemic has been challenging for families throughout the country. The Badger Report's Will Whitmore checks in on one local organization to see how they're making a difference during this difficult time. While the COVID-19 pandemic has brought challenges for students, one organization is helping younger kids with online classes and fitness during these difficult times. At the Madison Community Center, the First Tee program has become a daycare for students to focus on online schooling. The daycare allows students to learn online through Zoom, and the program consists of students who come from single-parent or low-income housing. The program helps out 24 students, and they are given two meals per day. With Wi-Fi and other amenities not being available to some students, the First Tee program allows them to do schooling in a comfortable environment. So we came up with a program that we call School Camp. So what that is is the First Tee in East Madison Community, uh, Community Center comes together to provide 24 kids um, access to the internet, access to one-on-one -on -one tutoring. Um, we wanted to help kids that necessarily didn't have the means to play golf, play golf as well. So the first team bring that component in. Aside from playing golf, the First Tee program does a variety of activities to promote physical activity. For Savato, his favorite part is seeing academic progress among the students. I think my favorite part is just hopefully to see that kids who would normally believe that they can do something as far as lift their grades up, see their grades improve. You know, I was one of them. You know, um, I can see a lot of myself in a lot of these kids. So, but you know, they just got to change their mind, their mindset. Once their mindset change and they get the proper help, I think that once they see that their report cards are getting better, hopefully a lot of these kids can maintain that. So I, I think that's what I'm mostly proud of right now. Mm -hmm. While the pandemic has brought a lot of challenges, it's nice to see organizations like the First Team making a difference. For the Badger Report, I'm Will Whitmore. During these tough times, it's nice to see positive things still happening in our community. Thanks, Will. The Madison Metropolitan School District is giving out free meal boxes of five breakfast and lunch meals to children under 18. More information, including a schedule of pickup times and locations, is available on their website at www.madison.k12.wi.us. The Madison West Transition Program offers special education students who recently graduated a bit more help with building life skills to gain independence. I spoke to a Madison West Transition student and her teachers to see how virtual learning is affecting these students. 
virtual learning has its challenges. I can't hear you yet. Madison West transition teachers have found it especially difficult to keep their students interested online. Keeping engagement when it's just your teacher or instructor like clicking something versus having them physically in front of you pointing, directing, and like modeling things, it's a lot more difficult to get certain concepts across. Teachers say they're using fun activities to help students focus during class. Yeah, I tried to incorporate things he likes to keep him engaged, and I made this with all his favorite superheroes, and it animates the numbers as he's counting. Some students are struggling with working on social learning. It's hard to read emotion over the video camera. It's hard to read someone's body language. Since not all students can see each other face to face, the staff have had to get creative with social activities. We have like a cooking class on Thursdays. The teacher will go and drop off all your ingredients so that you can join virtually. And that's like helping them build their skills, but also giving them a time for them to be together. Student Katie Goldschmidt says she's able to still see her friends in person. Sometimes I go to um, a walk. I got I got friends who lives with me in our neighborhood. Goldschmidt says she likes online schooling but misses the friends she can't see. It sounds like the students are doing really well. Will they also be virtual next semester? So there actually hasn't been a decision on that yet, but the students will hopefully know what their semester is going to look like very soon. We've had a pretty warm week, but will that continue into the weekend? Let's, let's find out from Nathan Denzine with the weather. Thanks, Reagan and Lily. We're in for a cold, rainy start to our weekend after enjoying some more mild days this week. This afternoon will be mostly overcast with a high of 39 and a low of 30. There's a pretty high chance of some rain that starts to mix in with some snow later in the afternoon and then later on into the night. Saturday will cool off even more with a high of 33 and a low of 24. There's about a 50% chance of snow throughout the day in Madison, which should accumulate to about 1 to 3 inches and will continue into the night as well. The rain and snow will finally stop on Sunday, but it will still be cold and mostly cloudy with a high of 31 and a low of 19. With the weather getting colder as Christmas approaches, it looks like winter is finally here. That's all for me. I'm Nathan Denzine for The Badger Report. Back to you guys. Thanks, Nathan. Up next in sports, we'll get updates on Wisconsin football and basketball. And we'll also hear about how COVID-19 has iced the Wisconsin men's hockey team after the break. You can try, but you'll never stop a Badger. Because we Badgers are born with curious minds and endless heart. When we see a curve in the road, we speed up. When there are mask shortages for first responders, we make our own supply chain. When there's a world on pause, we sharpen our claws. Through thunder, fire, and pandemics, we'll keep going. Because after all, you can't stop a badger. UW Athletics has faced extreme challenges this year as sports teams confront the consequences of COVID-19. The Badger Report's J.D. Danielson is here with an update on sports. Thanks, Reagan. With the Wisconsin men's hockey team set to finish their first half of the season against Michigan State this week, the Badgers found themselves in similar straits as their counterparts on the gridiron, waylaid by COVID-19 outbreaks and forced to cancel games. The 5-5 five and five Badgers, 5-3 five and three in the Big Ten, most recently completed a 1-1 series split at Ohio State. Already with one COVID outbreak sidelining many starting lineup stalwarts, assistant coach Mark Strobel spreads the praise to those in relief. Yeah, I think a guy like Sam has stepped up for sure. Uh, Brock Caulfield has had a really strong start. Um, Cole obviously is a goal scorer, and, and he can certainly help you out on the power play. But, you know, to me, a guy like Jack Orniak has really taken his game to the next level, uh, and that's helped a lot. Owen Lindmark, I thought, was really good. Um, in the Ohio State series. Um, and Jason Doogie's a guy that, you know, again, for as little as he's played uh, in his first three years, you know, he was asked to, you know, play a lot of minutes here uh, in the last uh, few weekends. And I thought he's done an admirable job killing penalties and um, giving some of the top guys uh, like Weisbach and, and Cole a little bit of a rest. 
The Sam in question, Sam Stang, is a true freshman and fresh face to the Badgers squad. Providing four goals in the Badger men's past six games, Stang has been a part of the core keeping the Badgers afloat in the standings. Asked about his take on the COVID-related shutdowns, Stang put a positive spin on it. Um, it's, I mean, it's definitely been a, a memorable year, I think. It'll be a kind of a fun one to look back on and pretty quirky. Um, but I think the first half of the year has gone um, really well, all things considered for us. We had um, guys go down with injuries, guys having to leave. Um, obviously, COVID came into play um, here at the end. And, and so it's definitely, I think, like made our team um, closer than we might usually be. And, and that's definitely something that one of the few positives, I think, coming out of this year is that we've had to go through all this crazy stuff together. Um, and I think we've done a really good job of handling it so far. The Badgers flexed their depth in the early, unaffected portion of the season with solid wins during a 4-2 start. And with the experience gained during the starters' absence, Coach Strobel is confident in the team's push for the postseason. I think if we can stay healthy the second half, uh, we'll, be a, we'll be a much better team for it. And we'll, we can give anybody a run. Certainly Minnesota's very good. Michigan's got a good team. You know, anybody can beat anybody uh, on any given night in our league. And um, But I, I think the goaltending has to take a bigger step. It's been good. It needs to be great. And then we'll, we can build it out from there. Success has come in waves for Badger sports across the board this season, impeded by COVID-19-related stoppages. As the men's hockey team pauses for a moment, promise remains for Badger hope to be reborn on the ice. In other news around the state, the Badgers men's basketball team entered last week flying high. Ranked number four in the nation with a rivalry matchup against Marquette, senior Demetric Trice nearly closed the game out himself, reclaiming the lead with seconds remaining and attempting to take a charge. Unable to plant his feet, however, the Golden Eagles hit the free throw line with milliseconds remaining, not only tying the score, but retaking the lead and the victory with a last second buzzer beater shot. Golden Eagles 67, Badgers 65. With a win against Rhode Island this week, the 4-1 and Badgers will next take on Northern Iowa December 16th. In the surprisingly balmy tundra of Lambeau Field, the Packers made easy work of the Eagle, fledgling Eagles team Sunday night to improve to 9-3. to 30-16 is your final in favor of the green and gold, with history coming from a familiar position. The bad man himself, Aaron Rodgers, became the fastest quarterback to 400 passing touchdowns, doing so in 193 games. That'll wrap things up for sports. Back to you, Lily. Thanks, JD. People are flocking to Christmas tree lots more than ever this year for a bit more of holiday cheer amid the COVID-19 pandemic. We will also see what's in store for UW-Madison's 2020 winter graduates after the break. You can try, but you'll never stop a Badger. Because we Badgers are born with curious minds and endless heart. When we see a curve in the road, we speed up. When there are mask shortages for first responders, we make our own supply chain. When there's a world on pause, we sharpen our claws. Through thunder, fire, and pandemics, we'll keep going. Because after all, you can't stop a Badger. Christmas tree sales have been through the chimney this year, but choosing a tree isn't always the easiest thing to do. The Badger Report's Sovia Mador shows you the sights and sounds of Madisonians making that big decision at Summer's Christmas Tree Farm. You go out and look for that tree, and when that one jumps out and says, take me home, I'm yours, that's the one you want. That one, like and that one, and that one. All of them. And that one, and that one. You might knock it down, so it might as well be a little bit smaller, huh? <laughs> yeah. So this is an opportunity for them perhaps to start their own tradition. And we're happy campers for that. And I'll go look over here, and then I'll let you know. So we kind of go that route sometimes. So. Um, we're going to put it in our living room. In our sunroom? In our sunroom and our living oh, room. Oh, yes. Apparently we're getting one for every room in the house.
enjoy the farm and get some fresh air and buy a tree. <laughs> yes. Okay, Reagan, I have to ask, did you have a real Christmas tree growing up? I actually did, and it's one of my favorite Christmas memories because I was able to spend time with my family, you know, hunting for a tree and going out to the farm. That's so sweet. With the end of this semester coming up, the Badger Report congratulates all of UW-Madison's winter 2020 graduates. This year's commencement speaker is United States National Women's Soccer Team player and UW-Madison alum, Rose Lavelle. We have an exclusive sneak peek of her address, so go ahead and take a look. And when I was up till 3 a.m. procrastinating in college at my house on Mifflin, I would always joke and say that my best work comes alive when I'm under pressure. The pre-recorded ceremony will take place on Sunday, December 13th at 11 a.m. Be sure to tune in to hear the rest of Lavelle's speech at go.wisc.edu slash commencement. That concludes our last broadcast of the season. Thanks for tuning in. One last time for the Badger Report, I'm Reagan Zimmerman. And I'm Lily Zoller. Have a great weekend and happy holidays.